Hey everyone, you're watching Force Forward, Force Brands' forward-leaning video series where we interview leaders to discuss what business looks like tomorrow. Today, I'm so thrilled to be joined with not one, but two special guests. They are the brains behind the blueprint cold press juice movement, and they are the co-founders of a new brand, Earth and Star, which they'll tell us a little bit more about. How are you doing today, Zoe Sakutis? Good. Uh, day 8,000 of quarantine. Thank you. <laughs> and how are you, Erica Huss? I am also doing well. Thank you very much. Awesome. Well, let's get started. Um, I do want to learn a little bit more about the background of Earth and Star. What inspired you to launch it? You two are both busy with a podcast, not necessarily thinking about the next move in, into CPG. So Zoe, why don't you pick things off? What inspired you to launch Earth and Star? Right. We weren't necessarily searching for the next, you know, superfood or um, healthy lifestyle habit. It just uh, it was sort of um, a moment where Erica and I were both users of a product. So about a year and a half ago, um, I think we both started taking functional mushrooms, um, putting it in our coffee on a daily basis and you know, had a pretty good understanding of adaptogens and adaptogenic mushrooms and what they could do for you, um, which, uh, as, as it turns out, is pretty much everything under the sun. Um, but we were particularly fascinated with this mushroom kingdom and we're feeling the benefits and, you know, taking a look around the market and not really finding something that was checking all the boxes. Um, so there were a couple of things, you know, more in an instant coffee format or ground coffee format or, you know, tinctures, powders, pills, and God knows I don't need one more supplement to add to my cabinet. And I don't think Erica does either. So we're definitely both suffering from, you know, supplement fatigue. So we thought that, you know, oh my God, I can't believe I'm going to say it, but there has to be a way, uh, but you know, there there has to be a better way to consume this product because the whole point of it is that you have to take it every day because ultimately it is an adaptogen, right? So it's a loading process. It's not a magic bullet. Um, and so instead of adding one more thing to our daily routine, we just thought like, why don't we do exactly what we did with Blueprint, which was take the power of the plant kingdom, um, whether it's, you know, uh, eating a plant-based diet or juicing um, or just saying eat more raw foods package it up, um, present it in, in a way that is aesthetically pleasing, uh, tastes delicious, and people are like happy, and proud to carry it around. So we did the same thing with this. We just took, you know, what consumers are eating every day anyway, you know, taking their daily habit, which is typically coffee, um, and, and infusing it or, you know, uh, supercharging it with functional mushrooms. So, we created a plant-based uh, oat milk latte and we paired each functional mushroom with its own flavor. And so now you don't have to go out of your daily routine. You could just continue, you know, drinking your latte and reaping the benefits of the fungi kingdom. And Erica, what was it about Earth and Star and in getting into functional mushrooms that was so inspiring and that really made you want to pursue this? Um, well, I think to, to Zoe's point, it, it's not that we were actively searching for something because I think, you know, oftentimes that comes through when a brand introduces themselves and it's very clear that they are tapping into a trend and trying to kind of be a copycat or ride someone else's coattails. I mean, for us, it was really, um, you know, we felt like there's real power in this, this, you know, this ingredient that we ourselves are really really enjoying and we are often the people that you know our friends come to and ask questions for you know advice on wellness topics of all kinds which is part of the reason why we started a podcast um so it was really a question of okay you know we've known for a long time and this takes us back a few years we, we left blueprint in 2014 we started the podcast a few years later um and it was really a question of what we are actually looking for does not exist in the way we want it to exist. And that is the motivating factor for most founders, I think. You, you see the white space, you solve your own problem. And for us, we said, okay, there needs to be a more convenient, more delicious, um, and just more appealing option that can also transcend beyond the wellness community and not just kind of preach to the choir, but really have that quality that that you know a mass audience can embrace and that was the light bulb moment with blueprint and we felt like okay this you know 
we batted it around for a while and we said this this feels like it has legs this feels real this feels authentic it's solving our own problem and it feels like something that yeah we have to pursue it and put it out there because it's not out there and we want it for you know for ourselves well you both have such a knack and it goes without saying a knack for finding what works in the wellness community you took something cold pressed juice which at the time wasn't very sexy or glamorous but you knew how to elevate it and sell it to the right audience and package it up so I'm just wondering what elements you are borrowing from your experience building the Blueprint brand and you're applying to Earth and Star. And Erica, we can um, start with you. Sure. Um, I mean, I think you, you said it quite well. It's we, we kind of, we do feel like we have a knack for finding what works. And more importantly, I think what translates to a broad audience. So this is something that already exists in nature. It is, um, you know, it's super effective. There is a lot of white paper and science behind this, which is great. And, you know, we don't have to be the ones that are out there being prescriptive and telling people what they have to do and what they need to know. We can certainly support that educational process by helping to share that information, whether it's through our website and we have a blog section or whether it is through our podcast. Um, but really we feel that, uh, you know, it's something that, it works, it just needs to be more easily embraceable by a mass audience. We feel that we have a real knack for communicating clearly in terms of directing a message that's gonna be well received by an audience and just being super authentic and you know straightforward about what it is that we're offering. And Zoe, are there any elements, lessons, biggest learnings from building Blueprint that you are applying to Earth and Star? Uh, you know, the thing that strikes me um, the most in, in these two brands and how they parallel is that, um, you know, when you take something super fringy and, you know, it's speaking to the early adopters and the hardcore wellness community, which I think juice cleansing certainly was, they were going to be on your, on your team from day one. Um, and this is the same, the same sort of, um, situation in that you know mushrooms can be a little bit polarizing a little weird and creepy and like too eastern for a lot of people so i think one of the big learnings is like find your audience speak to them know that they're there you don't have to do a ton of educating in the beginning um and it's just a really easy way to organically authentically get those um ambassadors um, from day one you're launching this brand new brand um and it category that doesn't have a ton of com competition at the moment um so it is relatively new and you're also doing it in a climate that's a global pandemic so talk to me a little bit about what are the challenges of launching a brand during a global pandemic how odd is this so as it turns out uh, our second business is also being launched during a pandemic or not a pandemic but Blueprint, we launched in 2008 2007 which was in the midst of the mortgage crisis right so um, people were certainly, uh, you know, having financial trouble. Um, there was not as, as much disposable in income, but, you know, we were basically presenting something that was, um, super premium, super luxury. I mean, we went from, uh, seeing a, maybe a $5 juice on the shelf to, you know, asking people to pay 10, 11, sometimes $12 per bottle of juice. Um, and we explained why and they got it because they invested in their health. And I think we're seeing the same thing again in this pandemic is um, typically <clears throat> what we've experienced is that consumer behavior kind of shifts. Um, so, you know, you have all this uncertainty. Um, you feel like everything is out of your control. So very natural thing to do is to say like, okay, what is within my control? And oftentimes that is taking control of your own health. So the timing, you know, I think at first glance seems a little bit scary and unfortunate, but there are tons of, <clears throat> there are so many benefits to, um, to launching this product right now uh, for that reason, but also for the reason that what we are presenting people with is really a long-term solution to, to, to their health, right? So functional mushrooms, first and foremost, are immune boosters. So um, this is speaking, it's very timely. I mean, it's speaking directly to the issues that we're dealing with right now, which is addressing our immune system. How do we boost our immune system? And it just so happens that 
functional mushrooms are a great way to do that. Um, so I'm curious, Erica, on the challenge side of things, what are some of the big challenges you guys have had? Well, I mean, I think uh, there's there's two sets of challenges, right? There's the new set of challenges, which is that we had a certain launch date and plan in mind that was kind of turned on its side as soon as we realized really how serious the impact of this entire crisis was going to be, both from a health and just human interaction point of view, as well as from uh, an, ec an economical point of view. Um, so that was certainly nothing we could anticipate, but um, as Zoe was saying, I think we were able to, you know, we're, we were somewhat fortunate and we were at the stage that we were when we came time to, to make the decision, which is, yes, we're going to proceed. We don't want to, I think there are probably, you know, you could name a handful of brands out there that may be capitalizing on fear a bit, may be trying to cash in on a little bit, you know, of, of the panic and, and concern and either upselling or kind of creating something out of nothing to give you promises that you can't deliver on in terms of health benefits. This, we are very proud to say is completely legitimate in terms of the actual immune boosting capabilities of the product. So um, that was never something that we were going to, you know, waver or change course on. But then the other piece of it really was just like anybody else, um, you know, building a product, there's always going to be challenges along the way that you don't anticipate. So the formulation actually proved to be very challenging. Um, we've spent a really long time, more time and money than we had necessarily anticipated, uh, really perfecting the product, the actual taste and flavor profile. And that was so important to us for so many reasons. I mean, I think Blueprint, to our credit, we really created something that was as equally delicious and craveable as it was functional. And I think that is what set us apart. Um, you know, it was, we were into whole, we entered Whole Foods because of the demand of the women in Tribeca who were ordering our product as a cleanse program, marching into Whole Foods and saying, why can't we get this cashew milk on the shelf? And it was the cashew milk that was, you know, probably the most indulgent and delicious of the products, but it was still a very nutritionally sound and, and nutritionally dense product. So again, we're very proud to say that, you know, these, we, we've gone through the R&D rounds and rounds of it in order to crack the code on finding the perfect balance of flavor in these products. And the number one question people are going to ask us is like, do they taste like mushrooms? And they 100% do not. They stand up on their own against any matcha latte, you know, cacao latte, anything you see on the shelf that doesn't have a functionality ours stands up to it, and then we've got the added benefit. So we're very pleased that, you know, even though that was a challenge, we were able to, to kind of get over that hurdle just through the exhaustive trial and error because our standards are, you know, pretty high when it comes to something being tasty. Yeah, and whenever you're launching a new, relatively new category, so at the time, for example, when you were launching Blueprint and Juice Cleanses were new, there was a huge educational component that comes along with that. So and as to your point, Erica, talking about mushrooms and people, consumers asking, does it taste like mushrooms? So what steps are you guys taking to educate the consumer about functional mushrooms? And Zoe, I'll start with you. It's a challenge because obviously launching during a pandemic, um, we don't have stores really in the same way that we did before. We're not able to um, take advantage of that in real life experience and talk to consumers in person and demo and do tastings and get their feedback and engage in the same way. Um, and in that exchange, there's also a lot of education that's happening. So, um, you know, really on that front, we're going to have to get very creative and that is working itself out on an hourly basis. Uh, and we are right now in real time trying to figure out how to, um, how to get that feedback loop with consumers um, in a way that it will make up for that loss, uh, that brick and mortar loss that hopefully will come back eventually. I mean, right now it's ex exists in a very limited capacity, but um, you know, we really are going to have to get crafty online and figure out how to, how to address consumers directly um, through whatever e-commerce platforms we can. Uh, but thankfully I will say the difference with this um, the way it's different from Blueprint in, on the educational front is that um, Blueprint truly was a complete white space. I mean, we really were reinventing the wheel there, I think. Uh, not only asking people to do a cleanse and detoxing and not eat for days on end and, you know, drink this juice instead and 
pay us $65 a day, you know, so it was a big ask and um, it was a big leap of faith for a lot of people and there was a lot of education. With this, thankfully, um, you know, we're taking advantage of the fact that we're sort of a second, third mover, but we've changed it and we've created a hybrid, I guess, of two things that already exist in the market and have proven out and there's a lot of success in them already. So, you know, you have your coffee set that's exploding and there's a ton of innovation there. So there's no, you know, not a ton of educating that needs to happen there. And then you have obviously like the adaptogen space and functional mushrooms and even CBD, I think has helped pave the way for this type of product because there's a ton of openness around it. And I think consumers are willing to turn to more natural remedies now, much more so than they were even, you know, two years ago. So we have a lot of things on our side, but the educational piece will definitely be a challenge. But yeah. I'd also add to that, that, um, you know, to Zoe's point, we are happy that some of the groundwork has already been laid in terms of educating and taste will certainly be the biggest hurdle because that's the one thing that you can't, you can't describe enough for somebody to embrace it. They really have to try it. But that being said, content is going to be really important for us. So we've already got a pretty robust, um, you know, starting block of content on our website. We've got some blog posts. We're kind of going in depth on really the world of all of these different types of mushrooms and what they have to offer. And we have a podcast. So, um, you know, we're using our podcast really as at this point, you know, kind of a marketing vehicle for the brand. Uh, we've had a number of interviews with experts on adaptogens in general. We've had a few very mushroom specific episodes. So, you know, we are going to continue to use what we've carved out for ourselves as that place where we kind of maintain our voice of authority and, you know, education in this space and be able to use it for, you know, to kind of further the conversation. What does the next three to five years look like? I think that there is a huge market here and we're just scratching the surface right now. Um, especially in the, in the West. I mean, mushrooms, the power of functional medicine, um, we're really just starting to embrace it now. So, um, I don't think retail will ever come back in, in, you know, how it once existed, but I think there are tremendous opportunities and we are going to exhaust and milk every single one of them, whether it's online or brick and mortar. Um, so I don't know. I think the next three to five years look pretty exciting. And how about you, Erica? Anything to add there? No, I think, I mean, I think there's opportunity here for sure. Um, DTC ha is, you know, is very powerful in keeping that conversation going with the customer. And it's something that we're super familiar with from, you know, going back to blueprint days. So between rolling out in DTC and then eventually, you know, branching out broader in e-commerce and getting to whatever retail does look like in, you know, a few years time. Um, yeah, it seems like a very exciting and uh, vast landscape for us to play in. Awesome. Well, we look forward to following the success of Earth and Star and of course, keeping in close touch with both of you guys and following the journey. So thank you again so much. We so appreciate having you guys on board. Thank you.